Well, good morning and happy Lord's Day. It's a good day to uh, serve the Lord. I want to share with you this morning some uh, brief scripture from uh, Matthew chapter 11. Very, very familiar portion of scripture, and especially in today's times. This scripture has been quoted a bunch. Uh, Matthew 11, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Um, randomly here today, I'm sitting here at my front door, and our cars are sitting right over there, and uh, I'm reminded of a horrible dad joke that I say to uh, our kids at the time when we're on a trip or headed somewhere. They'll ask that old familiar question, Dad, are we there yet? And then I give them this irritating response. I can't believe I've become my dad, but that just happened somewhere overnight. But anyway, I'll always say, we're here, but we're not there. Oh, dad. And you know what? I look at the scripture from Jesus and I hear him kind of saying the same. We're here, but we're not there. The place we are is not where he wants us to be. But let's look at the scripture very clearly. The scripture tells us some clear things about Jesus, but it also tells us some clear things about us. Now, I gotta go a little theological here for a quick second. Knowing about Jesus doesn't do us any good. In fact, the Lord has, I've been looking up some scriptures in James and all that where it says clearly that even the demons in hell know about Jesus. As I prayed through that concept this morning, I thought, man, America is a lot like the demons in hell. Now hear me out on this. We as a nation know a whole lot about Jesus, but knowing about him is not even close to the same as believing in him. We're here, but man, if we know about him, we're not there. <laughs> Jesus invites, that's such a key word. Jesus invites you, he invites me to believe in him and to keep believing in him. And in these times today, man, that belief is challenged. I mean, challenged, attacked, attacked either violently or sometimes just a slow whittling. Man, that belief is constantly challenged. Mine is, and I'm guessing you're spinning on the same messed up planet that I am. So Jesus invites us here in Matthew 11. Then Jesus said, come to me. Leave the place you are, disbelief, doubt, fear, and come. You're there, or you're here, I should say, but you're not there. I have to continually choose to come to Jesus. Come to me all. I love the fact that it says all. If you struggle, you're part of ALL. All of you who are weary, oh man, and carry heavy burdens, oh man, and I, Jesus, will give you rest. Jesus says to us, I can't give you what you need until you choose to come come to me. Ironically, as I mentioned a moment ago, I'm sitting here at the front door of our house. And um, every end of uh, October, uh, what some call Halloween and what my wife refers to as Meet Your Neighbor Day, uh, we put candy out at the front of the house and then we go to a different neighborhood with friends and uh, go trick-or-treating. And there's always a bowl of candy here. And anybody that chooses to come, if you're one of the first three people, will get the, all the candy they want. If you're the first person, you're out of luck because all the candy's gone because the first three people consider it a blessing from the Lord, I guess. But the reality is, is if you come, man, there's ridiculous amounts of blessings. If you don't come, there aren't. So Jesus invites us not to know about him, but to come to him. An act of our faith, an act of our belief, an act of our will to come to him. And then to take, again, our choice, take my yoke, on you and let me teach you. Have you paused? Have I paused and allowed the Lord to teach me today? To teach him what's true. What's true about him? What's true about you? What's true about a virus? What's true about the news? What's true about whether or not you can get tested? What's truth? Capital T, truth. What's truth? Because Jesus says, I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your soul. Rest. That's what I pray for you. That's what I pray for me, to find rest for our souls. I'm not going to find it in myself. I've got to leave where I am. Am I there yet? No, I'm here, but I'm not there. 
I choose to go to Jesus. I choose to take my cares, cast them on him, take his yoke upon me, and walk forward in the freedom that he gives me. I'm telling you what, these are crazy circumstances, but in the midst of all this, we can find the reality about Jesus, not just knowing about him, but choosing to come to him and experience him with our belief, with our faith. Heavenly Father, thank you for my friends. Pray your blessing upon them. Lord, I pray that we would actively and continually come to you and receive all you have for us. Lord, I pray for our thoughts, that we would choose to come to you in our thoughts. Pray for our emotions, that we would come to you. Lord, I pray for our concerns about kids, grandkids, employment, work, tomorrow. Lord, I choose, we choose to come to you. Lord, you're not just handing it out. Lord, you're inviting us to come to you. Forgive me, Lord, for wanting you just to make things better, but having no intention of coming to you, trusting in you, and believing in you. Lord, I, as an act of my will, come to you, trust in you, and declare my belief in you. I pray each person listening to this would do the exact same thing. Pray blessings upon them, their families. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for hanging out here today. The word is alive. If you choose to believe in it, he's alive, he's good. Come to him.